Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 with our Realistic series. It's March. I want to plant sugar beet, which I'm going to plant in that small field. These two here are going to be corn. I'm going to plant sugar beet and then I want chickpeas and lentils. So if we have a look at the planting schedules, chickpeas and lentils we can start planting today. And then they will be harvested in July if we plant them today. Or if we wait until tomorrow, they'll be plant, uh, harvested in August, which might actually be better. Uh, the sugar beet. If I plant a sugar beet now, that will be harvested in October. And the corn needs to wait until next month to plant, and that will also be October. So I'm actually thinking the only thing that we should plant today would be the sugar beet. Then the chickpeas and lentils, we wait until tomorrow, so they harvest in August rather than in July. I just prefer to do it that way round. No particular reason. Sunflowers I need for pig food, but I'm going to hold off on pig production until next year at the earliest. And we can focus on the other crops. Unless I just do one chickpeas or lentils. Lint I've been saying lentils. They're not lentils. Lentils is the thing above the door. Frith, come on, get the program. Um, chickpeas and lentils. Uh could do them in July. Uh, no. No, I don't want to be doing that in July. I'd, I'd rather, like, sail on through and we'll start this in August. Um, so I will wait a month to plant those, which means that the sugar beet right here, I want that. I don't want to be harvesting that in November. I want it earlier in the year if possible. Um, I just prefer to do it like that. So the sugar beet we need to plant now. Which means we need to go and lease a planter. Now, I can actually wait until tomorrow... So uh, I already know which planter I'm going to get. I've already decided on the one that I would like. And I, I think it's going to fit quite nicely. Also, it's nice wide, um, width on it, wide width on it. So it's actually pretty good. So it's field 34 is going to be sugar beet. And then these two fields here are going to be done. So they're plowed and that one's seed bed. So they're all ready for the planter. Um, corn for these two, sugar beet for that one. And then over here, I've got, uh, it doesn't matter if well, they are actually plowed and, and they're ready to go. But it wouldn't matter if they weren't plowed, that they would be absolutely fine. So I want to unhitch this trailer a second. I'm going to just put a bit of food in for the chickens. Because I've got the food here. Verse up there and... Close. There we go. Right, so I've got sorghum here. I've got uh, 1,100 litres of sorghum still. I'm going to uh, almost 1,200 litres of sorghum, actually. And did you just see the snow just kind of dropped then? We lost a layer of snow across the map. And that's because we've had quite a lot of snowfall. I like that we get quite a bit of snow on this map. That's quite cool, because you don't always with some of these maps. So we're going to back you in there like that. And I'm going to tip that out. It'll probably, yeah, that all goes in there. So now the chickens have got a little tiny bit more food. That's excellent. And then I can bring this one back over here. And reverse you in there. And you're going to just stop on this side of the shed for now. I'm going to go there. Right. That's all I want to do today. I'm going to wait till tomorrow because I want to leave leasing. I'm going to lease the uh, planter and I want to leave it as late as possible because of the cost involved. Like you have to pay extra for each day and I want to do some in March and some in April. So I don't want to re-lease it. Um, I want to uh, just keep hold of it because if you send it back and then you lease it again, it's, you, you've got to pay for the initial leasing cost and that ends up costing more. So it's better if I can keep it just over the, like, have it at the end of the month and then at the beginning of the month, and, and it's just going to work out a little bit better for us. And, uh, right, other products, so you're going to be there. The other thing that I wanted to find out was how much is it going to be to lease a forage harvester? I kind of want to do it with this one. We've got a few others. There are all kinds of options when it comes to forage harvesters. This one does actually seem pretty cool, but I'm not going to use it this time. Um, 
we've got a really old one here cheap as well uh but i, I kind of don't i, I want to do this one this is one i want to do to start with you can do sugar cane as well realize that but anyway yeah so that's gonna make chaff that one is this right here to lease that is nine oh it's 20 grand okay so it's not actually as bad as i thought it would be we don't need it yet it's going to be much later in the year that we're going to want that one uh so that's only twenty thousand, which is a lot less than i thought and we've got the forage harvester headers over here uh we've got the class one which is picking up that would pick up grass on the ground if we were going to do that that's a direct cut for all of these crops also direct cut for grass as well again that would probably be quite useful if we were going to do grass silage which we might do at some point i haven't ruled that out and then we've got the class one the orbis here now this is a 7.5 meter cut these are all six meter cuts uh this is four and a half meter cuts these small ones the kempers um and then i've got a class a, a bigger class orbis this needs 750 horsepower this one here needs 650 combinations that is the 960 terra track which i think is the one that we were looking at i think there's only one of those the 960 terra. it is that one there is only one of them so we can have the really big header which is actually really cool i like that go through here so i got that one 100,000 and we got the bigger one is 120,000 for this header that is insane but it's a really wide header it's a really wide cut and i think that's going to make the job go a lot faster leasing that one's another 6 grand so we're looking at uh, close to 30,000 euros well uh, say 25,000 euros i suppose for leasing that whole machine but it's a lot better than i was originally expecting now what am I going to use to do my planting? I've got this one. Um, I've been doing a bit with that one. I've also got the one over in the shed. There's another one that we haven't used for quite a bit. We, we haven't done anything with it for a little while. It's, well, we've got that one there. Where are you? Where did I put you? I've got another, it, it's hidden over there. There it is. It's parked in the shed over here. I don't even remember what the horsepower of our tractors is. Um, if we go and have a look at the actual tractors. Uh, nope, nope, nope. I don't want to go there mediums oh these are both medium tractors so this one here is 250 horsepower this one is 264 horsepower and the fence right there is 400 horsepower which is an insanely bigger step upwards but we did increase the horsepower of that one to cope with the plows that we had that, that, what, that we had that we have that, that we've got so there was a reason for that but i want to use the deutz far right here the warrior We've got front loaders all over the place. My general rule, though, for front loaders is tied into my personal rules that I have with um, the use of what it calls the thingamajigs. The, the, the who's me calls it the auto load trailers. I don't use auto load trailers unless I have the actual means to pick up the items in question on the farm. The only exception I make is is quite often the, the logging, where I was uh, loading up the logs with the auto-load logging trailer, just because I don't want to be messing around with that too much. Um, but generally, if I want to be using an auto-load trailer, then I do actually need to be able to physically pick the stuff up, which is why we need front loaders on the farm with the different attachments, so that we can do the work in question we can load up the items if we wanted to using a front loader but we don't actually have to we can just skip that bit and use the auto load so that's kind of like my personal rule that i always try to implement if i can now it's this one here that i wanted the kvernland optima rs it's ninety thousand euros if we were to go and buy it but we're not going to we are just going to lease it so that means that we get it for the princely sum of five thousand euros 4,564 if you if you really want to be pernickety but we'll call it 5,000 and we will leave it at that now I'm hoping I've got enough seed should have I've, actually yes I've got seed and fertilizer up at the farm so that shouldn't be much of a problem uh, literally takes 660 liters now I can it's not corn that we're wanting to do at the moment it's not sunflowers it's not beans sugar beet 
I want to plant sugar beet first, and it's going to be planted in that small field. So let's whiz across the road over here. And we'll go up this way. It's the one that we cultivated. I say small field. This one here is the smallest field that we've got, I think. Um, the one that we're about to go and plant with sugar beet is the second smallest field. I've looked at the prices for the forage harvester. I haven't actually looked at the prices for the sugar beet thing yet. That's going to be even more costly, isn't it? And also, I'm not sure where the seed is. Let's bring you in around here. I'm going to need to be able to load up. Now, what have I got? Pretty sure i got some bags somewhere that have got seed in them. Have I got seed in the storage? I think this is the storage for seed. So i got fertilizer, lime. Where's seeds? Vegetable seeds. That's, that's the other stuff. I don't want that. Uh... I thought seed was here somewhere. Oh, there, seeds. 3,600. Right, so I should have some in here. I can turn off those flashings now. Let me reverse in there and we'll get this. I should be able to put both the seed and the fertilizer in here if I press N and I open that one up and then... That's loaded the solid fertilizer. It's not giving me the option to load anything else. So quite possibly this one. I think if we go and stand near it, it'll tell us. Uh, I have actually got seed in here. It's just maybe I need to be in a slightly different position to load that. Let's have a look. No. It's not letting me load it. Maybe I need to position this one differently. Sometimes you do. Some some of these machines are a little bit picky with it. It's not allowing it. There. Right. This one was just a little bit picky with it. That was all. I had to move over slightly so that the actual seed section was underneath the unloading spout. Now that's all worked. So we can go. We've got 660 litres of seed. We've got the fertiliser in as well. In theory, I should be able to go and plant this field and it should put a second coat of fertilizer. Because we've got one coat, which was left over from when we harvested the crop here. I should have my flashers on for running down here. We can ignore that bit. Now, what we do with this one is you bring it down there like that and you unhitch it in the field. I really like these, these type. And you come over this side and you reverse up you hitch on the seed drill on this side the planter like that and then we press X and that folds it so it folds away the wheels and folds away the bits on the sides and everything that's now ready for us to go and use we can use that uh, that side does tend to stick out a little bit more but I think we'll probably be all right driving this way around the field to drive. Actually, I prefer to drive this way, so better if we drive this way. Now, in theory, you wouldn't be going around tight corners with a sea drill like this. It would utterly destroy it, but I feel that we can probably overlook little things like that, and we can spin around sideways anyway, just because the game will allow us and it's going to be a little bit quicker so we want to get all of this field planted i'm hoping that the 600 liters of seed will be enough to do the whole lot and yes i'm overlapping an awful lot around the edge i'm probably going to have to straighten up and fly right on that front over here kind of thinking that sheep would be a good thing a, a good first animal would be the sheep right there because we can get the wool off them and we might actually be able... I mean, we could just sell the wool straight away and then there's money coming in from the sheep. Um, but we can also turn that into uh, cloth. We can turn it into clothing. There's a few options that we've got with that. And it shouldn't be all that expensive to kind of set up. Actually, I think the tailor is like 100000 so maybe it's a little bit expensive. But anyway, um, sheep is quite good because... 
just the wool itself is, is worth a pretty penny, and it's quite easy to look after sheep. All you've got to do is dump some hay in for them, and hay is fairly easy to go and make, especially on this map, because there's a hay dryer option. So we don't even need to make the hay in the field. We can just do it, like, on the farm. Go and gra grab a bit of grass, dump it into the hay dryer, and job done. And... Um, yeah, I know I'm overlapping the edges an awful lot on this one. I'm thinking I probably want to do twice. Oh, we got a bit of that going on. Yeah, you see the dip right there? For those of you who don't know the mechanics of this game, if you have a dip like that, some of the wider machines just will not operate on them. And it is incredibly frustrating sometimes because it does that. And the only... The, there's... Sometimes there is pretty much no way to get round it. And it can be really, really irritating. There. Right. I'm, I have been able to get round it that time. It's only that one little bit of the field. We might be able to do a little bit of landscaping just to get rid of that at some point. It looks like the... And it's only if it's like a, a really bad dip. Like most of the time, just the gentle undulations of the landscape are absolutely fine. But if very occasionally you'll have a dip in the landscape that is a bit more problematic. And I've already used up nearly 200 litres of seed on this. That surprises me. I didn't think that sugar beet seed would be used up quite so quickly. We're going to have to run back up and do a second lot. It's a bit annoying. I don't really want to have to do that. Oh, well, if we've got to, we've got to. We'll, we'll run back up there. I could bring... A, well, I say I could bring down a bit of seed with a trailer. I could, in theory, bring down seed with a trailer. But i got no way of actually putting it from the trailer into this one. Because you need to have a trailer with an auger. You, um, it doesn't matter what sort of trailer. There's a few different types that we can use in this game. But you do need to have a trailer with an auger in order to be able to get the stuff going in there and I just want to be able to see this thing in action just see what it looks like it actually looks pretty cool I like this setup yeah and also I really like the look of this track this Deutz Far Warrior does look very cool I don't think anybody can really argue with that that, that is a cool looking tractor like the, the, the colour in it that we've got on this one I, I do think that that is a, a, a rather spe 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 spectacular, spe spectacular example of tractor. Let's come around here. Are we going to be able to get through the little dip here? We should be okay with this. It's only when the dip is like in the middle of the machine that it will cause... Yeah, see, it's fine. That's not caused any issues whatsoever. And I'll run up here so that we just kind of finish on this bit and then... Actually, I'm thinking I can do hired help, but I won't start from... The hired help doesn't need to start from this side. We want the hired help actually to start from the other side. So if I do... Oops, no. I need to turn the thing off. You can stay running. But I'm down to halfway on the seed. We could do with a little bit more seed on here. Uh, let's leave that bit. I'm going to have to finish this up and... I come back to the field later on anyway, so it doesn't really matter which side I start on for now. So I'm going to go over here and I want to get that kind of like lined up with some of it. Let's bring you back there. Inch forward a bit and then hired help. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be using the hired help as much as we possibly can while we do this map. That is the principal rule that we want to obey. Now, one thing I do want to have a look at is on here. Okay. It's leaving stripes without fertilizer. Which is weird. I'm quite sure why it's doing that. Oh. No, there's nothing to do with rolling. Unless it's... I was wondering if maybe it wasn't planting properly because it hadn't been cultivated properly, but it doesn't seem to be that either. 
For whatever reason, it seems to have not done a bit of fertilizer going around the outside edge of the field. I do notice, though, that there is a line of stones coming up on the field. I'm not quite sure what that's all about. We're going to go and spin round now. Let's have a look. I mean, that does look a little bit neater and tidier, but again, that outside round does look like it hasn't quite planted properly for reasons unknown. This does look really cool, doesn't it? It's nice to actually see a bit of field work going on. We've spent a lot of time messing around with greenhouses and traveling backwards and forwards on the roads and, and so on. And I'm very aware that whenever I do a series, like time, it trying to get time to move forward at a reasonable pace always seems to be a little bit of a struggle. And I, I don't really want it to be a struggle. I, I would like time to be able to tick forward at a reasonable pace, but we don't always seem to be able to master it. So at least we are moving forward. As soon as this field is planted, we can skip forward again. And then we've got a whole load more planting. We've got two fields of corn to plant with this setup. And we've also got chick a field of chickpeas and a field of lentils to go and plant with the other seed drill. So that's the two fields up there that we can see right behind us at the moment. Those have got to go and be done. There isn't really a lot else for me to do other than just wait for this one to finish. I'm just going to let this one finish out for a little bit because you don't want to be staring at this the whole time. Well, I did that much of the field, but we've now run out of seed. So we're going to have to go back up the top and get some more. Or we've got to bring the seed down here. Unfortunately, though, I don't think there is any way that we can bring the seed down because we've, I mean, we've got a trailer, but there's no way to transfer it from the trailer to this one. What we need is a seed overloader thing. Well, you can have an auger wagon. You can have just a, a standard auger wagon, which we could go and use. Uh, just wondering what we've got here. We've got several this beet carts here. We, there's a few of these. We'll be using those later. And then there's potato ones. Um, but anyway, it's a seed overloader that we want. So, I mean, if we could find a really cheap one, that looks awesome. That's from the sugar beet pack. And quite, quite frankly, that thing looks incredible. Um, it's also one of the ones that um, it tips out cut sugar beet. And uh, yeah, the sh sugar beet cutter, which is really cool. Um, you, you generally, you put those in the field and then you tip them into there and the lorries come up to those and, and they use them. It's kind of like an intermediate between the lorry and the... Um, the grain bin is running around in the field. But, uh, and there's another one there, the Kulamon ones. Uh, but that's not what we're wanting for this series. For, for this series, we want something like this little org wagon here. Uh, that, that would be good for d doing the seed. Um, this is a... Well, this, this is like a proper seed one. This is 22,000, this one. This one here is smaller, well, cheaper at least. Um, 12.9, this one is 16 cubic meters. That, that does take a lot of seed. Let me have a look through and see, what, what is that? Uh, is this, oh, I, ah. All right, that, I've, I've never seen anything like that before, but I can see what you do with it. You back the trailer up to this bit right here and you tip it into just a, a normal trailer rather than having to use an org wagon and you that one's like it, it's deployed so you've got these stands put down in the ground and then the trailer comes up and tips into here and then this auger then siphons it off into a nearby waiting lorry and it's got its own engine on the front as well and i mean that's really cool i like that not seen that before and this is more seed tenders here i think i'm gonna go with this seed tender here and at the moment i mean i could technically go and buy it i think i've got well yeah it's twelve thousand. so i have got enough to be able to go and buy it if i want to however i'm 
going to lease this one because the leasing cost is going to be very low. Now, we've got quite a few different colours in here. There is gloss, red, new age, and aged for the ruby red. So, there's a red gloss, and there's a ruby red. There is new age, and there is the other one, whichever one that one was, that was uh, aged. So, I'm just going to play around with the colours a minute. I suspect that we're going to end up with something like this. Uh, that one's waiting down in the shop for us to go and get it. So I'm going to have this tractor because it's the fastest one we've got. And I'm going to whiz down there and go and collect it. Before I do that, I'll just drag our water tanker across the road here and top up the greenhouses as we go past them because we can. And that way we, we've at least put a little bit of water in for these. I'm sure there's... Well, there's a little... Is this still running? Okay. That needed more water than I thought. We will top up some other things on these greenhouses pretty soon. Um, and I'm also going to have to take out all of the crops that we've grown in here and take them away somewhere and, and do something with them. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on greenhouses and, and factories and stuff because it does get a little bit tedious for you. And I, I'm well aware of that. So I will try to avoid spending too much time on this kind of work. So I'm just going to unhitch that one there. And then we can go racing off down the hill. Now, there are those of you who have said a number of times that um, my... Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.